Um, so, okay. Please, what I read, what I understood from um, Ralph was, um, he said that our resources or um and our rights are supposed to be um in like and um, and no one is supposed to be, be aware of it and we are we are all supposed to be ignorant about those things so then he he proposes some principles bill of ignorance and the two principles he talks about um equal liberty and social economic in inequality and with the um with the equal liberty, he says that everyone should be given the same resources in um regardless of their strength or whatever they have. And the social one I thought I understood. So um basically he says that everyone should be given the same resources um, regardless of whatever you have and no one's um, whatever someone is given should not be more than another person you thank you harriet i think it's a good effort the the latter part though is not exactly correct but it's okay you you've read something that is why it's, it's a class time so we'll discuss thank you let me take naomi party i am waiting for more hands please Telling me what they saw in the text that they read. Okay, on Rawls. Rawls's paper is not anything. It's a seminar text. It's accessible everywhere. Okay, so let's listen to Naomi. Now we take her this. Naomi, please unmute and 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 go ahead. You are muted, so we can't hear you. Okay, please, Madam. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Madam. And um, please also saw the two principles of uh, justice as fairness. The first one is equal liberty, which includes um, everyone should have basic rights, political rights. And then the second one is if there, there should be social or social and e economic inequalities, it should satisfy two conditions. And the first condition is, and the first condition is, everyone should have equal opportunity to um, every position. No one should be, everyone should have equal opportunity. And then the second condition is, uh, which is, if um, that, if there should be inequalities, they should. It should be to the advantage of the less privileged. Thank you, madam. Thank you very much. That was also a good effort in your own words. You try to capture the, the content in your own words as much as possible. It's fine. We'll put some more flesh to it together. Very good. Let's take a third one. So I, I'm, I'm going to take James Amankwa now. Your boy. Sir, please go ahead. Keep your hands Hello. up. There are a lot of oh. people. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yes. So, please, what I learned from Rawls' theory of justice as fairness is that he proposes his uh, this theory in uh, he proposes his theory to the de um, describe it against the theory of utilitarianism. So he is against the utilitarian ideology that the greatest number of people should be the basics for uh, justice. So whatever serves the interest of greater number of people for the utilitarians is justice. But according to Rawls, he indicates that everyone should not be disadvantaged and that even if it is just one person at the expense of a larger number of people, it is not right. That is not justice. Very good. 
that is why he's proposing what he proposes, we, where he feels that it doesn't necessarily look out for the greatest good for the greatest number. Utilitarianism. No, he, he thinks that the principle underlining the action should conform to what he's proposing. And that would be just than just overlooking the minority, for example, in the name of uh, fulfilling the desires of the majority. Okay, so that's an important contribution you add to what uh, Harriet and Naomi has have said so far. Very good. I want more, please, I need, I, I tell you, if you listen to City Campus, you'll see. Well read, at least, it's all of us, okay? So if you should show that, you should show that you know your staff as well. This is a healthy, very healthy competition. I want to hear from more people. Thank you so much, the three that have spoken so far. Who, what else did you read? Rawls, uh, the libertarian view, there are a lot of intricacies in that. I got objections even from uh, the students. I got uh, an elaboration, they expanded it and they were talking. And then I could now just take it here and fill in that gap and take it here and fill in that gap. And it's so enriching. Okay, so I'm waiting for more from you. Any, any other one or two others? Quick, quick, quick. I don't want the recording to be too lengthy. You have so much work to do if we do that. Mr. Creedy, that's what I see there. Go ahead. It's, it's a question. I'm sorry, we are losing you, sir. It's a question I want to ask. And, Go ahead, sir. And, and, please, I want to ask a question. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, I'm saying that is the question I want to ask. And the question I'm asking is, um, someone told me the critical summary assignment on justice and fairness was optional. So I wanted to know if what happens if- Were you in vote. class, sir? Were you in class? Vote. Excuse me, were you in class, please? Please, I was in class, but I forgot. We can, let's deal with that later, okay? I want us to focus on the content proper so that we can talk about that later. Okay, doc. No problem. Because this is recorded. People will pick it with the intention to look at what we said to each other on the rolls. So I want to hear that. Whether you did a critical summary or not won't matter much. If you did it and submitted, fair enough. If you didn't, you read it anyways. You are expected to read as a class. I want feedback on that. And I'm getting a bit impatient now. So... People should quickly contribute. Let us know what you read so that we can build on that. It's the same hand that is up again. That's I'm not calling her. Naomi has spoken already. Thank you. Yeah, no, James just spoke as well. I want, I want more hands. I think that I'm going to open an, an assessment immediately. I will open it now. You do it in 20 minutes. I'll grade it. You know I do that. <laughs> I'll grade it and come back into the class and continue so that I can hold people accountable for content you know, engagement. Then they will do well. I want you to do well. I don't want you to be all relaxed, overly relaxed, you see, because you know that oh, the, the lecture will come, she will take you through the content, she will take a time and explain. It's all good, well and good, but I'm able to do that because I study the content. Even though I'm not going to write an exam, but I want to give you good content. But I keep advising students and keep prompting and do everything that I can to make you feel obliged to at least look at it before you come. So when I ask, what did you see? in roles, I want you to say, tell me things. Oh, I read something about it. Oh, I think that the principal, that he was saying something. I, I, I saw a critique that was raised about his this. And it, I, I saw that he, has, he says we should assume a veil of ignorance. And that meant that this, this, this. someone was OK to add to what she said. I was, that's, that is class discussion. You see. It's not you come and sit and, let, and watch me perform. So I'll end the class very soon. You are going to work if the posture doesn't change immediately so that you will do well. I've done, I've done a final exam, I've done them. Let me take a Nana Kofi Amu Kwanza. Go ahead, sir. 
Okay, thank you very much, Doc. Okay, so um, the thing that I want to add to what my colleagues have earlier on said is that um, John Ross talks about um, the story of justice of fairness, and he's much concerned about how the benefits and burdens which are collectively, um, um, let's say, formed are going to be distributed. So, very good. Based very, on good. Assumption. very good. Before you continue, see what your friend said. This one line he, he I mean, this one statement he made captures the fact that Ross, so let me share what I, I prepared whilst I was uh, listening to your city campus folks. It was so brilliant because uh, I'm speaking in context, you know, it was so brilliant. It was back to back, not one person doing a show, show much, you see. One person set us off, another person contributed, there was a third one. So as they were speaking, I was feeling in no specific order. That's what you see me sharing now. What your friend just said says that I'll say, okay, so Rawls is trying to show us how to distribute. He was doing distributive justice, highlighted now. That's what Rawls was doing. One of you also just told us that his posture, in other words, his approach was not con uh, was not a utilitarian. It was contractarian. He told the line of the social contract theorists. I could ask you a question, short answer question. Well, you've done your eyes, so maybe not. But it could be something you would need in your writing of an essay. Sheet. Why you would think of Rawlsian or Rawls's justice as fairness as contractarian. He adopted that posture. I'll let the gentleman continue shortly. Okay. His his approach wasn't he, he wasn't measuring what is just on the basis of excuse me, uh, utility, the greatest good for the greatest number. If you remember our utilitarian uh, 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 moral philosophy we studied, we, we introduced ourselves to it in level 100. We did a build up, I suspect, in level 200. And you did moral philosophy. I suspect you would have covered utilitarianism, egoism, all the isms in, in ethics, OK? A friend Rawls doesn't do uh, utility. And that came from one of you, even the city, when we did city campus, that one didn't come out at all. I didn't even stress it myself, but your friend said it. A reason why you would want to relate him to the contractarian the uh, theorists that we've studied, Hobbes, Locke, what have you, especially Locke. It tells you then that there is something about what Rawls is doing that you can relate you can link to, you can connect with the social contract theorists that we have studied. What is it? What are the lines of contractarianism that you see in Rawls's justice as fairness? Okay, so he presumes, this is Rawls now, he makes a presumption of what? An original position. I think one of you has mentioned that, if I heard right. It's also on our screen now for you to arrive at a just system. He's doing a theory of justice. He's trying to give us a principle that will help us be regulated. It will regulate how we administer justice, how we identify a just system and how we do an administration of that justice. We administer it, we deliver justly. What kind of justice, what kind of conception of justice does Rawls have in mind? Justice conceived of as what? Fairness, being fair. Not necessarily treating people equally or ensuring that people's freedoms have been, uh, have been what? Enhanced or respected. His focus is what? A fair system of justice because he's interested in what? Distribution of resources, both, and there comes the second part of what your friend said that made me say, very good. He talked about distribution, and then he says, distribution of both the benefits and the burdens of society. That's crucial to what Ross is saying. He's not talking about only goods, the good, the responsibilities also, so opportunities and responsibilities, goods and what, eh, eh, eh. Uh, if you like, a bad, so to speak. <laughs> Benefits and burdens of society must be shared. 
He's doing distributive justice. That's why you can distinguish what he's doing to a certain extent from other conceptions of justice at Bohon, like Plato's conception of justice within the person. What we call harmony. If you allow reason to lead the emotive or the spirited part of the person and the appetitive part of the person. If you allow reason to lead and the person will live in harmony, there will be justice within when reason leads. So the guy insults you, you are very angry, but you don't act emotionally. You don't let your emotions drive you. Then there will be inconsistency within you. There will be disharmony. There will be injustice within you. You have to let reason lead you. Okay? So with justice within, this is Plato now I'm speaking. I didn't even mention that. Justice within you, justice within the other human person, justice within the third person will now apply. When we transfer that to this justice within the social structure, then we will have, hey, when we, we apply that within the society, then we will have justice. When we apply such harmony within society, then we'll have justice. Harmony within society is where we let people who are led by reason, logic, analysis, lead. Then those who have energies, <laughs> the spirited folks, let them guide us. God. Then the appetitive, those who are driven by appetite, creative. In other words, they are creative. Let them do the buildings and you know, home stuff. This is this is Plato's conception of justice. He's not doing a distribution of resources kind of justice. No, he's giving us a conception of justice, what it means to be just. But Rawls is not doing an analysis of the concept of justice. No, he's showing us principles. That will help us distribute not just the goodies, but also the problems, the burdens, the responsibilities of society will share. How to do that distribution is what he's doing. And so that adds very beautifully to what your friends have said so far. So please continue. Sorry for, I, don't, I, I hope you didn't forget what you were saying. Please go ahead. Yes, please, doctor. Um, as I was saying, um, Rob proposes this idea based on the assumption that in the primary position, just like we have the state of nature, um, society has individuals who are born free and equal. So um, it then goes on to the fact that because they are equal and they are born free, um, he assumes that they have a collective effort which they use to um, cause the burdens and which they use to produce the benefits. And as they have to share these benefits and equally. So it also continues by proposing two um, main principles of justice, which we see as the equal liberty principle and the social and economic inequality, where the equal liberty principle talks about the fact that um, each person is supposed to have equal rights and also access to the most expensive basic liberties, that the freedom that the society produces. And the second one, which is the social and economic um, inequality, it's also um, based on two other conditions that it must satisfy to other conditions. The first being the fair quality of opportunity. But as we are looking at the social and economic inequalities that are supposed to be attached to the rights that they are enjoying. So whenever um, in the society we have people who are um, benefiting or suffering from the burdens that are collectively produced, there has to be a fairness. And this fairness must apply to all. There should be no discrimination. So we are talking about the fact that there should be no discrimination. People with the same level of talent and ability must have the same willingness so that they can they can actually um, be on the same position. So he also proposes a hypothetical veil of ignorance where he talks about the um, and Yada, you are so good. position where yeah, you are so good. I like are you a TA or something? Thank you. you know what I'm saying? It's how you are how you are presenting the content, you know? It, it's like you are chatting, but you are touching on key things. I, I need to know, do I know in class? Do you, do you discuss in class? I, I mean, I can't make you um, up. I don't have to think that. Oh, no, you don't have to do that. You see, you don't have to do that. I have to know. Yes. Uh -huh. I know you online. That is name. Nana I know it online. But I don't know you in person. It doesn't matter. But it will matter at, at certain. You are you are doing very well. Of course, you're all your colleagues who spoke before you are doing well. But I'm impressed about how you are connecting them. So, friends, this is what your friend is 
has been doing all this while. After he shows us, um, of course, he builds on what others have done. So one other colleague told us this our friend is not doing a utility-based kind of justice where you just look out for what benefits the plenty. And then you say that is just, that's good. He is doing contracting and he says we 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 are starting from a certain place and then we will agree to do things this way if we were so and so and so we will agree to do things this way. We will contract to work this way. And that's where he's going to a friend is going to show us the assumption of an original position, a veil of ignorance, and stuff like that. But before he goes there, then he tells you what the principles will be that we will agree to if we assumed this uh, original position and veil of ignorance. Then he, he quickly, that, that thing is very intricate, the way, the way Rawls is trying to satisfy everyone at once. Rawls is trying to meet the libertarians halfway, satisfy their concern and emphasis, which is what? Individual freedoms. The libertarian wants you to stress on what the liberty of the person, don't interfere with people's liberty, that is their freedoms, their individuality. Because normally those who are advocating for that are better placed in society, John Hospice, I mean, Robert Nozick, folks like that. They feel that, why should you come and take my resources in the name of social welfare? And you say you are using it for the benefit of all. Why do you want to come and take what is mine? It's an interference from government. If you tax me, and the tax is not to go and pro protect what I have, but you are going to help some poor people who are hungry so that day to day can get good drinking water. What, what is that my business? Says the libertarian. That is if you, you spoke about it in a brute. <laughs> brute literal way. Okay. Now, so Ross wants to make sure that they are emphasis on what liberties, freedoms, rights are given immediately without interference. At the same time, he wants to also satisfy those who emphasize what equality, egalitarianism. So he's bridging, mediating two extremes. That's why he proposes two principles that he says. Who is he now, Rawls? Rawls says, if we were to assume that we didn't know our place in society, we didn't know our interests, in other words, we didn't know what will benefit us and what will go against us, then we as, look on your screen now, we as rational human beings, those that we have tagged on, I try to cross it out so it will help your viewing, okay? We as rational human beings, we are rational. So if we are rational, the emphasis on rationality is important. We will think in a certain way because the engineer, Woluko, they are not foolish, they are rational. So that assumption is made. As rational beings, we will make or we will work by some principles that will augur for our well being. We will choose right, so to speak. How will we choose right at such an assumed position of what? A position that says, I do not know what will happen. I don't know which side of the world I'll be. I don't know if I'll be rich or poor in the actual society. If I were making this decision to guide that society, you see, I wouldn't know if I'll be the lecturer or I'll be the student. I don't know if I'll be the judge or the corporate uh, being cross-examined. So the law, the principle, the regulation, the the rule that I will want to operate should be such that if I go and I'm a student, I'll benefit. If I go and I'm a lecturer, I'll still benefit because I don't know where I will be. This is what uh, Ross is saying. And your friend is going there. But how he does it is beautiful, okay? Because it's, it's rounded. It makes you know that the person has a fair level of understanding so he can, he can navigate and show you that, okay, so this is what Ross says, or we stand behind the veil of ignorance, or we assume an original position. I'm using those phrases interchangeably up here. They're not the same. Original position, think, think of state of nature, naturally, prior to any connection with actual human society. 
prior to eh, so an original position before you even had any attachment at all. So assume that you didn't know that you will be a woman or a man. You will be born in Africa or Asia. You didn't know whether the admission process, this decision you're going to make about how universities should operate. You don't know whether you will be a university lecturer or you'll be in the university fraternity at all. How would you make decisions? Will you accept, for example, that universities should not receive any support from the government? It's only farmers that should receive. What if you go into actual society and you become an university member, student or lecturer, or whatever? Then you would have been disadvantaged. So Raul says, if we assume that we didn't have any connection with actual human society, there we go. We assume that we didn't have mothers, fathers, sisters, and brothers. We ourselves, we didn't even know what our sex, whether it would be male or female, Muslim or Christian, mothers or, or virgins, whatever. And we were supposed to make a certain decision that will affect actual human society. If we assumed an original position, we will be inspired by that which will be what reasonably of interest to us. We will do that which will help us. Either we, wherever we find ourselves, if actual society, that is the original position. And so that assumption that we pretend not to know what we are eh, in real society is what he says, you put on a veil of ignorance. You intentionally wear a veil, something that covers up, making you pretend as if you didn't know that you were you were a, a lecturer. You didn't know uh, your position in society. You didn't know that you'd be an academic. So now we are going to make decisions. Should academia receive more salary than health? Then you, you say, oh, I think that we should give health. He says, you will think through it well, because if you assume the veil of ignorance, it tells you that you do not know whether you will be the one who benefit or someone else will benefit, or you will be the one who will suffer or someone else will suffer. So if there is suffering associated with whatever principle you are putting there, you will want to minimize it as much as possible because you could be the one who will suffer. So if someone is caught stealing a goat, how should we punish that person to ensure that there is co cohesion and social welfare? Don't, we won't open your mouth, excuse me, Jaga. And so we have to give that person 400 years. Because you would think rationally that what if I found myself? Okay, so you will think and come to these two principles. It says every rational human being, if you were to assume the original position and put on a veil of ignorance. These are Rawls' expressions. And I try to help you see that. Put on a veil of ignorance. Then it will lead you to these two principles. The first one, which your friend eloquently uh, stressed, and I would want you to write down, is what? The equal, not you, the equal <laughs> liberty principle. That is the principle of equal basic liberty for all, for all, not for some. Equal basic liberty. This is for the libertarian. We must have the same freedoms, the same liberties for everyone. How does it capture it? Each person is to have an equal right to the most extensive basic liberty compatible with a similar liberty for others. That liberty that you have must be compatible, must cohere with mine. We should have the same basic liberties. Okay, that's the first principle. He says this is where we'll arrive at. We'll arrive at this principle if we assume the veil of ignorance and we also what, assume the original position. The second principle, I told you, is twofold. The second principle is a twin. Okay, so there is the first principle standing there, one, labeled as the, the equal basic liberty principle. The second one, that you all know, the difference principle would, would have been here. The difference principle is two in one. It has two babies inside it. The first one, 
the sub, eh? What are the difference principles? Social and economic inequalities are to be arranged so that they are A, reasonably expected to be to everyone's advantage. There we go. That's the A part. Arrange what? Social and economic inequalities. I think it was Harriet that said herself. She said, society has a lot of unequal. Some people are born with so many disadvantages. Apart from the natural ones, the social that has generated social inequalities. Some are high status. Some will never see hundred thousand dollars till they die. God forbid that for you. <laughs> because of where they are coming from, Charlie. They see ten Ghana grace. So there are inequalities socially. And economically. And Rawls says such social and economic inequalities should be arranged. There should be a deliberate thinking through that goes into an arrangement of that. One of the reasons why you would want to applaud somewhat a free SHS thing, no matter the challenges it came with, or the national health or stuff like that, even our very Western societies have welfare systems. As, as extremely libertarian, or if you like, individualist or liberal, whichever label you want to give it, as they are, is to make room for that because the people there, like we are also here, are thinking. You have to think. Some have unequal, I mean, we, we do not have equal social and economic status. You see, some have plenty enough to throw away, others don't have. Now, the difference principle, which is a second principle, says what? Arrange these inequalities. Which inequalities? The social and economic one. Arrange them in a way that will do two things at once, the twin. First of all, you will arrange it such that it will reasonably be expected to be to everyone's what? Advantage. So I gave so many examples in the in the city campus session. I hope when you engage with that, in addition to this, you you enrich yourself better. The reason why that one medical doctor, maybe he's a, he's a heart surgeon, we don't have many in Ghana, has to be given priority when he's driving in the traffic, perhaps, and we are all stuck there. Some way, somehow, we have to give way when he's. The, his car starts honking, he shows that that label, that, that tag. You would have to give way. We are only give way to some other people, <laughs> which is also okay. It's just that sometimes we are only who are the sister who went for lunch with him and they are late. They are returning the car. So we have to give way for them to come. Very annoying sometimes. But if they were working out, working it out the way it should be, then the medical, you know, this health heart surgeon, eh? dealing with health, taking care of thousands and thousands of people. I mean, sometimes you want to go and do a heart surgery of a kind in certain places. You have to book months because every week, those two or three people who are experts are operating hearts. Go every, every week they are doing, they are working. So you two, when you come and join the queue, you, 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 it should be your turn in the ninth month. And still count it, some three years, if it's not a major surgery. Because the people are not many. And it is a heart. And you mean, but if you in the agro, it's the heart. So we will treat their goal. We will want to treat this person whose status, there we go, eh? social and economic inequality. His status is preserved giving certain advantages, so to speak. It is as if he is the one we are giving an, an advantage to. He will jump the queue, he will have some allowances, maybe his children will have this, and he have a house here, we do this, because it will ultimately lead to a collective good. He will now be, okay, he can go and pick his children from school. When there are 300 people lined up that week, for, surgery, for example, so because we too, we will have heart issues and we want to be taken care of and we all can't take care of heart. It's not like, uh, you know, roasting cocoa, coffee brook man by the roadside, planted. Apologies to those fine 
women mostly who do that. It's also an expertise, but Ali, and she cry baby. You know, if I don't know how to do it, and it goes all, <laughs> all black, we we'll manage it. But you can't do that with people's hearts. I want you to understand. So it is in our own interest as roles to give, see, certain people, certain status, certain, uh, what's the thing? Certain social positions, somewhat special attention, which will look discriminatory, but it is not because it will ultimately what benefit the collective us. So you should be happy when your lecture is paid well. <laughs> because it is in, in your own interest. <laughs> it is in your own interest. That's what he's saying. That's the first part of the difference principle. We have to differentiate, but that differentiation should not be discriminatory. How do you ensure that? Check if that differentiation would ultimately, that's the A part, reasonably be to everyone's advantage. That's the point. That's why the military, the what? The president cannot be in the traffic with you. If he's shot from trouble for all of us, there is chaos. Someone will go and sit on the thing. You will call it cool. Well, he has to be there. So he cannot be mixed up like that. For whose benefit? A seeming disadvantage that gives him an advantage, but which ultimately benefits what? The entire. That's the first part of the difference principle. Then the B part, that's the second twin for difference principle, is that what? Social and economic inequalities are to be arranged so that we said they are A, both reasonably expected to be to everyone's advantage, and B, they should be attached. This is how you curb the discrimination. They should be attached to positions and offices open to all accessibility must be open to all. And this is your friend who was speaking, said that. That's how when I highlighted the, the open to all. Make it accessible to everybody. Don't say that it is only this group of people who will come because you are trying to bridge a certain gap in the name of disadvantaging at all these people, they are already rich. Let me give you an example. Say there is a competition ongoing. The persons that are competing, we are looking for the one who can play a certain musical instrument better than or the best keyboardist or something. Then a certain rich man's son is part of the competition. The reward for the event is 1,000 Ghana City. You know, it's a small project, 2,000 guys. And the people making the decisions say, oh, this guy, his father is rich. If you give him the 1,000, it doesn't mean he so said to in the afternoon class, 1,000 cities that he uses to pass. So let's give you to this other, <coughs> excuse me, gentleman who, who, who need the thousand. Look, master, we are rewarding talent and skill, not whose father is rich or whose mother is poor. If you don't know how to play, you don't know how to play. <laughs> we shouldn't say this one is despite son. For example, I've just given an example. So he can, if we give him the award, the, he doesn't even need it. Are you rewarding poor people or you are rewarding people who can play? This one, Ross will not agree with you. The competition is open to all. What they came to compete with is what? Skill, talent. You can chat on our on thing now. If you say that the one who is coming to university should get a guest before they come, make it open to everybody. Don't discriminate. Otherwise, you go against the first principle, equal liberty, equal freedom, see that. So, so, so hey, then Doc, what exactly are you people saying now? When do we adjust it? Write this down. In other words, the two in one principles that Ross has given us, the principle of equal liberty for all, and then the difference principle ultimately aims at what? What he calls justice as fairness. So let's write that down. This is what uh, Ross is trying to achieve. Quote, I'm quoting him now. All social values are to be distributed equally. See that? Unless an unequal distribution of any or all of these values is to everyone's advantage. 
always distribute the thing what equally. This is being recorded, so you can always play back and, and write that thing that you will need it. I'll quote it and ask you to critically examine with practical illustrations. So you should remember, okay, it is the two principles put together. He's trying to say this ultimately, but he opens it out with the two principles. What is he trying to say, Rolf? He's saying <laughs> all social values are to be distributed equally. When it comes to social values, remember we said it is both burdens and benefits. When you are distributing it, distribute it equally. Unless, unless, I just said, unless if I did equal distribution, it will not benefit as well. So I have meal on the table. I have to share it equally. I mean, distributing resources among the 16 regions of Ghana. I have to do it equally. Unless, I just said, and on equal distribution will rather help Ghana. See, unless and on equal distribution of any or all of these values is to what everyone's advantage. If we realize that giving more of the cake, the national cake to this particular sector or session or region will augur well for our collective benefit at Ghana. Suppose we are putting more resources into health because there's COVID. You see that? And people are dying. And if you are dead, we don't care how much you have in your account. Oh, but you are dead. So the, 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 the finance minister or the nation decides that, look, normally we would have put 20% of our national cake into health. But we have a crisis. That must not escalate. So now we decide that we put in 50%, which will mean that other sectors and other regions will be affected. But this so-called, quote and unquote, seeming dis discrimination will benefit the collective whole Ghana. This is the thinking that Ross is trying to put across so that you don't go blanketly distributing resources equally. 10 people on that table, you go and put full pork, you know, tomato, Fuck show. <laughs> Ten people sitting there, you put a full pork on the table. The other table has 300 people. You put the same size of pork there. They are the same, not that some are children and some are, or some are poor. That one is not a fair sharing. There will be controversy there. Meaning when they go and put one full pork, 10 people on that table. Not I said not that the status is different. Not that one is the owner of the party. And the other ones are planky. They didn't even invite them. But you are sharing and you want to ensure that you have been fair. Look at the need. There comes a Karl Marx expression you should keep. It is, it is uh, prominent in the communist uh, discussion, communist manifesto. What does he say? To each according to his need. Write it down. Then a continuation of that from each according to his ability. That's the principle for egalitarian thinking. This is attributed to Karl Marx. From each, you take from people what they can give you. So from each according to his ability, to each according to his need. I cannot make a demand of level 100 Questions that PhD should be answering. Then I'm not a good teacher. I don't I, imagine it. You have to ask level 100 what level 100 students are able to answer, and vice versa. Then you give content according to the need. So you don't say your baby need, must get calcium so that he, he, he grows or she grows. Baby, maybe one year. So the meal you have prepared for the baby, bones, fufu, upon chinkakra, goat meat with a lot of, because hey, goat meat, the, the inside of the bones, the are calcium. They, who are going to feed that? One year, baby, you will kill the baby. There are calcium, yes, but you will kill the baby. You have to give according to their need, yes, and take from them according to their ability. What they can, they can give is what you expect. Jesus said, 
uh, the one who has given more in the Bible, the Jesus who was wild, offering tired and offering, he put inside. The man is peeping inside of him. The woman gave two mites, two, two pesos, 20 pesos, whatever. He says, all the people who gave, this woman gave more. This is the one who gave the highest offering. We are shocked. You were there. Mitchell was sitting next to them. Yes. We went to do show tanga, you and me, you and I. Eh? We drew our khaki there, gave it to the church. Oh, we even gave our house. You have 200 million houses. If you go and give one, you are making noise. You can give more. That's the point. So if you give, it is relative to what is left at home, what is left in the account. That's how we measure who has given more. <laughs> okay. So that the person who gave 20 grand that nobody recognized may have given their all. So I, I just want you to remember that as I show you the egalitarianism that is captured, if you like, so to speak, in the claim that what from each according to their ability to each according to their need. If you see that from Karl Marx, and I told you that Rawls is mediating the two, a very referee. So he wants to satisfy this a little and satisfy that person a little. The first part, equal liberty principle, is focused on making the libertarian, okay, your liberties, your freedoms, individuality, rights, government cannot be an interferer. If anything, government should only really protect my resources. That's what you should do. So if I have to give you something more to be a security, night watchman kind of guy, you see those phrases when you are reading, that's fine. But where you want to enter into my thing, as a right, not that I'm giving to you, say, oh, okay, I pity those people, take this and give to them. No, you, you are coming, I'm demanding it, that I have to pay. My labor, they say no. So he respects them, gives them that. Then he also turns to the other bit of it, which I have tried to summarize for you. Then ensure that there is what? Equitable distribution of resources and so that you are always going to share equally unless an unequal distribution will lead to what? Everyone will give everyone what? An advantage. Let me see if I've covered everything on our notes. So he's doing principle of justice. What is it? Yeah, justice as fairness, and it is a distributive conception of what justice. He assumes that the people, or he makes an assumption from start that the people making this decision, if they assumed a veil of ignorance and an original position, would be what rational folks, and therefore will make, will arrive at principles. Eh? Regulations that are acceptable to all and will be fair. Fairness means what? Fairness means they will make principles that will respect the equal liberty, liberties of everyone involved, and will at the same time differentiate the difference principle difference and eh? differentiate in so far as that differentiation of treatment of in what social and economic inequality, that differentiation will ultimately benefit everyone. But even in that differentiation, the B part is very important. The differentiations will be made open and accessible to all. So you see then that our friend is stressing more on what? Equity than equality. That is also important a point to make. We have already said that it is a hypothetical situation, just like we saw with all the earlier social contract theories. We then it's not an actuality, and see how that can go against where we get to objections. Any question? Okay. Now let me take. So Harriet spoke. Emmanuel, Emmanuela Bruce's hand is still up. If you want to add to Nana Kupiam, Nana Kupiam, you've done very well. Don't continue again. Keep the rest. Thank you very much. Let me take Manuela Bruce. Yes, if, it's an addition. if it's an addition, Manuela Bruce, add it. If not, okay, then madam. Yes, Go ahead. Madam, there were some things I read on and videos I watched, and I wanted clarifications on like what I learned. Please go ahead. Okay. 
And uh, the original position, I read that it is the idea that all people come together to form a social contract and reach an agreement as to what principle will be fair and just to be applied to all. And also there was another thing, they were like, it ensures a consensus on the principles that apply to all. I want to know if like, those terms used are right. And also under the veil of ignorance, was the veil of ignorance covers all in the original position. And when it does that, when there's that cover up, we instantly forget certain things about ourselves. We become ignorant as to what race, ethnic background or religion we are, and even our desires and conceptions of what is good. And I want to know if what I read, what I just said, if it's right and if the right things are being used. Ante, thank you very much for your question. I hope you are listening to me when I, I kept talking on and on and on and on. I've answered everything you've said. Yes, madam. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I just want to say the terms, the terms used. The terms. Yes, that's Certain the thing that, terms used. Which one? Veil of ignorance, we have mentioned that. Yeah. Original position, we just did. That's what. Okay. Your hand was up earlier, but I was yeah. speaking on earlier. Yeah. Yeah. So if it's clearer now, then it's fine. If not, then I can ask someone else to throw some few touch lights. Yeah, <laughs> little. Uh, uh, uh -huh. so, so, so touch light on what exactly, so that we don't we don't become repetitive. We don't repeat ourselves all over the place. So where do you want okay. the touch light to show one? Uh -huh. It's under the veil of ignorance, where it talks about when there's the veil of ignorance, we forget. If I want to know if the team forget certain things about ourselves. That is our race and in and religion. Yeah, so you intentionally pretend to have forgotten. That's what he's saying. Okay, Let's so not forget. necessarily forget. You have to tell yourself that you don't know who will benefit. That's why he will be criticized. That ah, I'm already living in society. It isn't like I will now come and live. So suppose I am the vice chancellor. I use that example uh, when I, I engage the first class. So let me use that right now. Are uh, uh, able a uh, Prof. Nanaba and Prof. Uh, Vice Chancellor. I mean, I don't think that he, uh, four years or five years ago it, she was even thinking that she would be well as far to yes, but perhaps she didn't think that things would move that fast for her to be there. Now, my point is now she's seated there. If the council, which she chairs, or she, uh, she chairs with others, or she's chairing a committee, of course, as a Vice Chancellor, making a decision on which admission processes we will go by coming here. Suppose the investor says, oh, we think that we want to give our student, uh, those who are not in Accra, a priority this time so that we can, can have more diversity, what have you. So all at the senior high schools or yeah, that are in Accra will, will just get 20% admission. Suppose it's a policy that is going to be deliberated upon, okay? And so uh, we want only northern schools, if you like, upper east, you know, the new regions. As for Greater Accra Day this year, maybe 20% admission be paid from there. This is the principle we want to go, go by. Why? Oh, we want to increase diversity. I think that the Greater Accra, most of the time, they are that the is too much, <laughs> whatever the reasons are. So they don't have the desire to say whatever they're thinking that has gone into it. This is the policy we want. Now, Raw says the people on the team making that deliberation should assume a veil of ignorance. That means they should pretend that they don't know who will benefit or who will be hurt by this decision. Those of them on the panel, they, they won't be hurt or they, they won't benefit. They should pretend that they don't know. Ah, this woman has children. She attends church. <laughs> she has church folks. She has colleagues that are dear to her. So if she's, if I'm on the team, I'm the person, I'm on the team. You think I will not be asking, ah, but if we do this thing, how about, and she had you have my neighbor's son. This boy is very resourceful. He's in an agra school here now. I've got no admission in. He will be affected by this. Okay, folks, you see, I think that our decision to do 20% is okay, but uh, we also have to consider the fact that this, why is, because there's an interest. 
human beings have vested interests. They are not now entering into society. This is the critique. I'm introducing you to a critique that uh, Emmanuel Edia, the class rep for City Campus, beautifully introduced when we're just about finishing. That the supposed veil of ignorance now, you, you Roll says we should put on, if we, if we put on a veil of ignorance, it just means pretend not to know. A veil, cover up, eh? Ignorance, you don't know. So pretend you don't know that you will benefit. My lady Manuela, if you were my prayer mate, my prayer partner, we are praying on you getting an A in all your courses this semester so that you get first class. Church colleague, me or your lecture. <laughs> Every day you come to my church office after service, you talk. No, no, I church, you don't talk. Oh, oh, please support me in prayer. So we hold our hands. When we finish, then we come to school too. Now I'm going to grade field 304. Your paper is in front of you. Ross says you have to be fair, meaning. Assume a veil of ignorance. Pretend not to know whose paper is lying in front of you. Auntie Adwa. <laughs> eh? When I'm saying this, I want to say, with all due respect, Auntie Adwa, you are my prayer topic. Me too, I'm telling God that. Let this sister get an A. So that her faith in you will be strong. The paper is lying in front of you. I'm the judge. The person in the boot there is my cousin's son. That cousin struggled to give birth one pair, see, 20 years before she gave birth to one child. That's the only child. The boy has been caught in a mix up somewhere. And the sentence, according to the law, is life imprisonment. This cousin of mine is the one who took me abroad, took care of me before I became a judge. Now I'm sitting in this. You say, veil of ignorance. The person standing there, when I'm going to make the decision, this is, Ross says, before. You even find yourself as a judge. So you apply the laws. You should make the laws. That is where there's a little, uh, you know, respite for, for laws. Because you didn't know directly that you, you'd be affected by that law. But the point is, even when I didn't know directly who I'll be, who will be affected by that law, I am a human being already in society. I know that I'm a woman. I know I'm an African. I know that I am not advantaged, sir. Society, I am mean, maybe I'm a middle class. So I won't be able to meaningfully assume a veil of ignorance. All the examples I've given were to show you that. In actuality, because I'm already integrated in society, this was Taylor's critique. What we did, Taylor, you remember that we shouldn't think of the human person as an extensionless, if you remember, yeah. So, so, and so, and so, and so, and so, bearer of rights, a tabula, epistemologically a tabula rasa. Those big, big books that he was using to, to show that. We shouldn't say that the person, when it comes to knowledge, is an empty slate. No. The people behind the so called veil of ignorance are actual human beings already inhabited in actual human society. Therefore, they have vested interests. They know. So, the supposed Fair principles will come with what? The coloration of those who are making the decision. They will look out for what to save their interest anyways, if they find themselves at the top or decision-making position. That's a critique raised against him. So my sister, the forget there is just an, a, a rendition of what Ross is saying. He says, pretend not to know. Pretend that you have forgotten that you are a sister. So they are talking about how women should be treated in society. If we were going into human society, who should do the house chores and who, who should sit and read graphic whilst we are doing it? Ross says, oh, if we look at it objectively, pretend not to know that you are a woman, we will agree at certain principles. Can, can you do that pretending? You already know you are a woman. You don't know the husband you have to, but you already know that you are a woman. It will eat into what you are doing. You already know you're African, disadvantaged in a certain way. So we can't pretend. So the veil of ignorance is saying that forget, pretend to have forgotten everything that you do. Have no attachment, no connection. You, don't have, you are not a mother, you're not a student. 
you are not academia, nothing. They are just there. How do you even make the decision? He says, so if you, are, you assume that, then you will be very objective because you look out for that which will benefit you either way. Okay? Now, that was the first critique. So the veil of ignorance may not meaningfully be achieved. So people will make decisions that have that are uh, tainted by what they have vested interest in actual human because people are already members of society before they they think about the rules, the regulations, the principles that should guide that society. Okay. The second one is a consequence of the earlier. There can't be an original position really. We are already co uh, connected. Okay, so I think there is an overlap there. Then the assumption that rational people will always choose options that will reduce their, their, their risk. You see, that will reduce the risk. Some too don't make decisions that will reduce any risk. They take decisions or they make decisions that will maximize profit. In other words, think about it. People bet with their inheritance. They are rational human beings, but they don't always look out for, okay, the option that will, will be good for me. Nanka, you are going to bet with your inheritance, a family house that you have inherited. I was supposed to also take custody of it. And but they go and bet with it, betting, chances, cha-cha. Because human beings, <laughs> rational as we are, can also take the risk of what? Trying to maximize. If you go and you win, you get somebody else's property and add yours. I was telling your friends that I heard that some uh, association of so so and so and so executive he collected money from them that is going to help help them get a, a accommodation or something like that. I don't know how true it is, so I can't verify. But I'm using the Chasanis instance. Look at the risk. Yes, yeah, student. And then you want to use it to do investment of a kind, whether positive or negative. I don't know. And now the student will have time. And his studentship was under threat. Is the person not irrational? But he is. But he was not always being conservative and looking for what is the right thing to do. No, no, no. Sometimes people make rational decisions that are rather targeting what? Maximizing profit, not necessarily reducing you know, risk. So what? So we are telling Rose that if you assume that the people behind the veil of ignorance hmm, will act rationally, they will think rationally, and therefore they will decide on the option, the principle that reduces their risk. In other words, they will decide in a way that if they go and they become the cleaner, they will also benefit because they don't know whether they will be the cleaner or the boss. So they will make principles that will, will better the lot of both of them. We are telling us that, well, people may make decisions thinking that me, they are clean at the end alive. It's boss that I'll be in the name of Jesus. I'll be the boss. <laughs> so they say the boss must have 100 million dollars. Clean, I don't pay you. Give him food. That's all. It's risky, but people take a risk in the, in, the, in the hope of what? Maximizing profit. Rational human beings don't always make decisions. Uh, the way that Ross wants to present it. Therefore, we may not arrive at his principles at all, even if we assumed a veil of ignorance. So that's the third level. Oh my, of what critique. Any questions? I'm done. I see a Dia Hagid's hand. Go ahead, Dia. If it's a question or an addition. Is it Hagid? Dear, please ask your question. I'm muted. If not, I take Harriet. Harriet, is there a question? Uh, hello, Doc. Go ahead, uh, dear. Did I pronounce your name? Uh, well? is Doc, it Doc, please, it's Dorothy. I'm, I'm using a phone with her. No, who is, is the name Haggit? I want to know if I pronounce it well. Yes, Haggit. Haggit, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, Doc. Okay, Doc, please, um, concerning the social and economic inequality, that role says yes. they are to be arranged so that they are both reasonably expected to be to everyone's advantage. Yes. 
my question is that this social and economic inequality sometimes um, an individual's interest is different from another individual's interest. Maybe mm, what I want, someone, I'm sorry, yeah. that's what someone should do the arrangement. Go ahead. Uh -huh. What I want for the moment is different from what Kofi wants. So Thank there you. is no way. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I can't shut up. Finish, finish, Pet, then I'll, I'll tell you. Yeah, go ahead. So there is no way we can have everything to everyone's advantage. Okay, so let's explain further. Maybe it can help. I'm a rich person. See, I have my own fleet of cars. I have my cars. They are my cars. I have my companies. I don't know who to equate that to maybe in Ghana. I, we may want to think of this part or Dangote or something like that. I have my stuff. Ross says it is in your interest to, uh, 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 to ensure that society, when we say that social responsibility, like a certain, uh, I want something that you can easily relate to, uh, a certain uh, network, let's say MTN or Tigo, says, oh, this is part of our social responsibility. Which social responsibility? Do you know why they are talking that way? Because if you look at the way the rich man has so much and the poor man has less, if you don't try to bridge that gap in a systematized way, you can't enjoy your riches. You will not be able to sleep at night. Your own Lamborghini, eh? Lamborghini or Lamborghini. <laughs> you can't drive it. I'm telling you, because a hungry man is an angry man. It is in your interest that we do what? We set up certain companies, what are they? Employ people, let them work so that the pressure in the system will reduce. It is in your interest. You see, that is what we mean when we say arrange that inequality. So why do we do free SHS, for example? Even that one is for everyone. But there are certain arrangements, they are affirmative action. They bridge the gap. Why? It is in the one who is enjoying power. It is in your interest that we bridge that gap. Otherwise, your enjoyment will not last. You drive your car to a certain place, you won't come back with it. You yourself, they will lift you out of the car and throw you out in the car city. You build a house, you can't sleep at night. When the cockroach passes, you are up. Hey, hey, my gun, my gun, my gun. Because there is no peace. When others are hungry, you think about it this way. If you are the only rich person in your family, every school fees passes your doorstep. Every rent is on you. Set others up within your own means. This is a, a in, in the not in the national level, at the national level, I'm speaking to you. Instead of giving school fees, and until you are bringing the first child, they do they give back plenty because entertainment is really nice in the bedroom. For <laughs> apologies, don't go and tell your aunt. And the man, me, if I get 17 extra, I'll, I'll give back. So don't go and tell your mother that. My, my lecture says you have nine children, so you have four. But I'm just saying, I'm oftentimes, I don't have any scientific research to that, but I hear it's being said. Now, you know, this one light off or no light off for entertainment. So they give back plenty. Firstborn. You have to take care of the firstborn to SHS. It's your own children have been are not down with them, but the cue from others is so overwhelming. So arrange the inequality that you can. Rearrange it. It is a conscious of what Ross thinks that will ensure a just system. Why? Because some didn't start where you started. Society gave some people some advantages that you didn't get. Look at you are in a car. You see lights every day. You see car every day. In this our Ghana here, some people do not have electricity. Not that they don't have it as in doing so. There is the grade doesn't get there. When we vote and we are counting our ballots, some people it takes a flight or drones to, to go and take the ballot sheet and bring them back. They don't see they have, even if our politics in a car. <laughs> they don't get sample to look to look at. That is a social inequality. Don't think that you are so intelligent. You got teachers in the school you are in here in Kumasi or Kufodi or Accra or something. They have access to even the syllabus. Some people don't know computer now. They don't know it. Not because they don't want to know. The system doesn't allow them to know. Some, some ladies don't go to school. They were married to some grandpa when they were two years. 
it is a social inequality. It's not an individual uh, ingenuity. Okay, so when there is an inequality like that, someone born, bred, and butted by a system that doesn't take care of that. I said, I told your friends, America, with all the riches, I talk about America to represent the Western world. There's a welfare system to take care of the poor. Someone can buy paracetamol, not because she didn't want to work. Okay, so then the same society should do the rearrangement in a way that balances it. Not that it is your choice. If you start thinking, so that's why I wanted you to read the libertarian and the, the, the communist argumentation. Okay, so you know how they are speaking. One is saying, share. Me, I'm going to work hard. It will some people to a lazy Africa. Don't work. Every day. <laughs> I don't want to say something. Every day they are looking for someone to collect from. Look. That is why the person is here, dear, near. But then I do not the community. If the thing is for me, I can use my left kick. Left here meaning I can take it. I can even do it. I can do it the way I want to. It's mine. It's yours. So they can give us what they can from social to political level. They will give you what they can give. They will tell you how you should manage your home. When you wake up, wash your face. You, you can't eat this one this morning. Your children, they can't go to that kind of school. Let them sit. That is how your life will be on probation forever. Therefore, in a society that we know that we haven't arranged stuff, we're talking about social and economic inequality. It is, it's unequally done. So there is a disadvantage that has been orchestrated. So the rich is rich through and through, and the poor is poor through and through. Well says it is only fair. Why fair? Because the, the cost is not as a result of you, Dorothy. Necessarily. It's a social issue. It's an economic one, a system that is running that would disadvantage you. So correct that disadvantage. How? Should you do it in an indiscriminate way? You know, if you do that, there will be problems. Make it open, accessible to all, yes, so that admission is open to all students, whether it's Legon or Panchenko. Okay? Make it accessible to all. But arrange it, that's the first one now, in a way that benefits all of us. So we don't create plenty of robbers. Plenty bitter folks, bitter, very angry people. If people are angry, society is chaotic. You can't go and buy your pizza and work designer and enter your room. You are going to eat pizza. Family size, one fifty Ghana. Somebody's looking for three cities to buy garish sugar. They say they can't have you are holding pizza. You small girl like that. You are in trouble. You won't get to your home. You will eat your pizza, the one you are holding your hand, and your pizza, the one that you cover up all the time. All right. <laughs> uh, I want to take <laughs> so that's the point. It's not a choice matter. I don't like it. He likes no, no, no. It's, a, it's an orchestrated one. That's why it is a system that must be run, an economic system. And, uh, and that is what, if it is an investing, it's a system that must be run based on what fairness, if it is Dr. Miles grading, she has to apply a fair system, not one that says authority is my friend. I, I get my, sometimes students that I know are very good, friend as him, they, they communicate and all that. And I can tell that the person, the way she's going, I think we have a crazy or something. It's paining you, but it is a system, you see? So if you want it to be fair, then you can tell the class, look, I don't like the performance so far. So I'm going to open three assessments do them so that still they will earn it by their effort, open to all, nothing like I've added three points to you saying, so you are my friend, yeah. No, 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 you don't do that. Let them earn it and let it be open to all. So you are bridging the gap and yet you are making sure that that opportunity is open to all. That is the difference principle. While in all of that, you maintain the liberty of all. Thank you. And I could Hand is up. It has been up for a while. Hurry up to I take the two of you, and I think we'll be done. Go ahead, sir. Okay, thank you very much, Doc. So, my question is regarding the statement that Aristotle made um, that equal should be treated equally and unequal, unequally. So, I wanted to ask is, um, can we say Roth's argument is um, the contemporary form of that statement that Aristotle made? Okay, first of all, I must admit I have not read the 
I, I don't know about the Aristotle one, or it's been a while, so I've not looked at it recently. But if it is as you say, that those who are equal should be treated equally, and those who are unequal should be treated unequally, then I think it captures wrongs. So if the situation is oh, unequal, okay. like our, our yes, like a special student, like I always use that example. We, we even though we are all equally human, uh -huh, we cannot say that okay, the I is I just did the critical thinking uh, interim assessment. They are still writing. I think they finished today. About four days now they've been writing. The special student didn't have to do any short answer component. Be like I'm in between. I'm here. <laughs> you don't do me nothing. Ah, someone doesn't excuse me. Excuse me. Apologies. But someone doesn't have fingers to type. How is she supposed to go and type uh, the empirical content versus predictive power mm. within that space? What kind of exam would that be? It's not fair if you ask him to type. So you, or if it is just punch A, B, or C, at least he can manage. Someone is physically challenged, and so on and so forth. So just so that you see the thinking that has gone into that policy that we have for our special students. I give you two hours regular, all of us are special in our own way. Yes, some of us can say the same thing 17 times. We do, we are born and it's, we do, we are special. Please give us seven hours to do the eye. The eye. <laughs> wash. <laughs> wash. But where it has been established medically, and then the admission processes admit that person as a special student of this type. In this, it says give an additional time. Because we are equal, yes, but we are not the same. So equal, treat equals equally. But where we are not equal, that's the difference principle, respect the difference. So I think that that's what captured. I can look at it closely and see if there are any additions or exceptions, but I think it should. Thank you. Harriet. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. This is another second question. Go ahead. Go ahead after that. Take Harriet. Okay. Please go ahead, sir. Okay. So the second question was a criticism that was made that the original people which is the veil of ignorance, may exclude some moral issues in the quest to promote or uh, um, go for uh, rationality. So I was like, that, that really um, makes sense because um, when, when we are talking about the veil of ignorance, we're talking about um, where individuals, as the lady said, that they may forget that is they've decided to forget some of the things mm -hmm. that um, they are fully aware of just to have that hypothetical situation. So yeah. is that a criticism that it may exclude some relevant moral issues? Yes, yes. That is a third, another particular reason. We, have, we, we can talk about the morality of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we can have moral challenges. There's even another one I saw in a certain book, but I feel that it's a bit technical for some of you, so I'm not worried much with it. But think about it. Our actual instinct, intuitively, we don't reward people for doing nothing. Africa. All you are doing is oh, you should, you should see that we are hungry. That's the only reason why people who have worked hard. Look, if you don't reward dessert, that people deserve it. Not dessert as in, uh, after the fufu, we had some ice cream on top. No, but I'm talking about dessert. People deserve it. They merit it. It is important. The way people like appeal to pity, my people, especially if you present yourself as a church folk, a mother accessible. Then people want to explore that. We are, we are philosophers. We love people. We help you, but we help you to learn. We help you. We guide you. Go all the way out. But we don't help you by adding two or three. Or, oh, no, please, if you could just change my view. Some are, I feel so insulted by, by some of them. They will just send an email. Not with our philosophy student, though. I think because they understand from the way we talk. Like, yes, accessible. Yes, mentoring. Yes, being down to earth praying with you if you have issues, but that doesn't mean we, we, we don't work at keeping our, our integrity. But normally, those who engage us, especially with critical thinking, they will send a snapshot and say, I got the deal, look, please, if you could just add three pay, it will move me from D to <laughs> D, D plus, so that I don't lose my scholarship. Wash it. Wash it. Yeah, we should learn <laughs> about they are doing what they can. 
They work harder sometimes for B plus. They really wanted an A, but an F A B plus. Some two they work, they get their A. Some two even after how they working C plus, it's not what they want, but they but you want to come and beg your way to from. Some say if you if you only added twenty, so twenty pair. Hey, <laughs> when I don't want to get too angry, then I block the line. Then I continue with my life. But those are countries. Sometimes I give a one. If you do that thing again, I grab you. I'll give you to the university. The people must deserve what they get. So we have a problem of that type of drugs. If the principal is not taking account of, did the person work for it? Does the not work as in go and kill yourself? No, but does the person deserve it? The component of desert or merit hasn't been captured. Oh, yeah, is there a need? There's a need. You have to meet it. Need, need, need. So sorry, the person is a special student, and my special students know how much effort you're going. So special students in see no class, no lecture. As I'm looking at the one right. But some way, somehow they shouldn't feel, hey, investor of Ghana will not pay me that. No, the principal will be sick. Then the person shouldn't come to school. This is school. All right. So I think that that part should also be incorporated since you raised the one on morality, of whether it is right at all in itself. Or you. you are not looking at all of that. You are just saying that. If it meets a need, we can discriminate in so far as it benefits from. Really? What about the moral component of it? The rightness or wrongness of it? Then I also added the desert. Our intuition tells us that we are supposed to give people what they're entitled to. We don't care if massaging it here and there a little will benefit the whole thing. What about the one who deserves? You see that some of our uh, pageants, okay, so. Sometimes they do it so that, oh, these people have won this, we have to take it to another region. So that someone has killed himself or herself to deliver. Then it is just the posture of the, the, you know, the committee this time that it shouldn't go to this region, it must go to that region so that the thing will spread out to us. Really, you are watering down the desert component, the merit component, the hard work that others have put you. So that part must also be respected. All right, thank you, sir. Harriet, go ahead. Um, Thank doc, you to Doc. Yeah. Doc, you said that um, like if we have only one surgeon in our and he has some places to be or important representatives who are scars in Monga, so they should be given certain rights, like maybe um, the school rights, or if they are suffered to be to be. Pardon during the trial. Um, yes, like, like the, the heart surgeon. Let's use a, a, a yes. particular like a heart surgeon who yes. is in the case. He has been called emergency. Come and take care of some people who have come. Their heart is popping out. And so he's also in the trap stuck. You say, Oh, he, he, I came before him, so he should be in the queue behind. Me. Is that how we do it? No. Oh. Immediately, you get an escort. Yeah. yeah. And he'll go. Because you are not a heart surgeon. But you to sell, maybe you to sell the Kofi Brookman for us, the plantain. It's very sweet. We like it, but that one we can wait. <laughs> we see the difference. Yeah. Yes. Um, but how about someone um in his family? Maybe he is the only the Usia Penny yes. and is in a very critical position. Maybe he's really late for his meeting, and if he does not show up, he will lose his job. Will that benefit everyone? That's it, will not, it will not benefit everyone directly, but it will benefit his family at least. Yeah, but or, his family is not the only family in the world. <laughs> How about if that's like indirectly, like small, 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 it's going to happen. Well, if he does, another Bush opinion will take over. That one, Grady, is not a problem. <laughs> Do you know what I'm trying to show you there? So this one is institutionalized, distributive justice at institutional level. That's why he tells you, place it at offices that are accessible to us. So he's talking about a justice system, like a national justice, like a university of Ghana is making a decision on how we will admit people, or take, you know, like United Nations is opening it, uh, you know, we are, we are, what is the thing? We are, we are opening nominations for who will be the next United Nations Secretary General. It, it has to be 
open this institution, not some local champion. Excuse me, I'm just trying to make it clear. You see, sometimes we'll be driving, or you'll be. I, I, can't, I like the car example, the hospital things. I feel you can relate with them better. Then you hear a car comes to pass by, and it is a national security some sort of apparatus of the plenty of If you don't let him leave the traffic and move quickly, some people are entering into Ghana at the borders. You can go, you and I have it. If you give me yeah. a bazooka, I will fall down. The weight of the gun will let me fall down. He has to, he has to go to the border quickly. There are things that they, they take care of. Whilst you and I, yada, yada, yada. Whilst we are sleeping and snoring. They will be told that they don't tell us. So that person, you can't say we, we all are Ghanaian. I mean, when we are in a queue, they, they, we are in traffic, look at them. Then they say, you know where he's going to. He's going to risk his life for you. That custom, or if that immigration officer, be, that has to move now. For which reason, he cannot be in a queue. It's because the nation is at risk if he doesn't get there. And stuff like that. So that is why he says, there can be certain, quote and unquote, privileges. It will seem like a privilege to you. We are not paid the same. Even in academia. Nanka Utah went on strike. And after the pull and push, I mean, we all know the outcomes. Because let them put their things down for a while. You see what will happen to the nation. We, we feed the human resource of this nation. So even if you want to be hard and apply the rules, you know that if you don't tweak the rules a little, they can be chaotic. I mean, they can be chaos. That will not augur well for all of us. But you tell Grana, we think, how about if them, look at the medical folks. They don't often even attempt to oh, but all, all, all they need is just a notice that we will start with OPD next week. <laughs> then the week after, we'll go to so-and-so. Then the third week, we'll go to emergencies. Nobody will tell anyone. That, my friend, you people should open your eyes. Because what will happen? The damage. That doesn't mean they should hold us to ransom. No, nobody does that if you understand your job. But the point is that certain offices and what, uh, okay, let me use status. There are certain social and what, uh, economic positions, um, offices that are treated specially. Either they get some allowances. They get some exemptions from tax, if you like. They don't queue. They don't even ask for fuel. It is just given to them, not because they, they, they have green blood running through them. No. It is because that advantage that they have will ultimately benefit you. You would want your doctor, medical doctor, to be paid more. If he's being paid more, we'll let him stay more hours. At the hospital. Ah, but if you are, you go with an emergency case to, let's say, uh, I don't know, Kolibu or somewhere, then the physician, I mean, the expert that will treat you is going to pick his children at school. And he will drive from Kolibu to maybe East Lego or somewhere, pick his children, take them home before he comes back, if he would come back at all. But he to ask children, who should take care of his children? His children should work home. Or the two-year baby should go and stand at the junction and, and stop a taxi. So it is in your interest as what? A beneficiary of his service. I'm just using that as, as an example. If this doctor or this profession of whichever kind has certain privileges that will relieve him of having to go and pick children from school. So maybe they give you a driver, like our MPs. They give you a driver. They give you entertainment allowance. They give you change dressing, whatever. All those because... We would make certain demands of you that benefits all of us. So that kind of arrangement may seem discriminatory, but insofar as it helps the generality of the people being affected, process it will be a fair system. Why? This, the B part augments the A. It says what? Make this opportunity open to all. So allow for all people who want to be medical doctors, to have access. Don't make it a special for lawyers. We have closed it now. If you leave to write an exam, don't ask a question. If you might, uh, even so it's wrong, keep quiet. What is this? <laughs> make it accessible to all. 
so that we too, we can fight and come and get into that place and enjoy the benefit there. So make it open and accessible to all. And that will kettle any supposed disadvantage that has had. I hope that helps. Yes, but that, that, it makes it sound like he is for the majority instead of the minority. Or majority. I, don't think, I think that, I don't think that comes out clearly because the doctors that operate our hearts in the country, for instance, are not, are not majority. Yes, but they are, um, what they do is to favor like the big. The yes, so that. Okay, so I think that the, the emphasis is not because majority are benefits, so it makes the action right. But he says we would create that disadvantage as a contract. So when we are contracting, in other words, at the veil of ignorance, which he says we should assume, we have already critiqued that, that if we were assuming a veil of ignorance, that we don't know where we'll be, that's how we will think. We will think in a way that, okay, then whoever will be the one that will take care of this, that, and that. If it turns out that we have only two surgeons, we have to give them certain priorities. So otherwise, if two people are taking care of 33 million hats, we have to make sure that he gets free scholarship and learns, and then he, his children are taking his wife. They should have accommodation at the place that they should, all these things you are saying is not because of the people that will benefit. It's not your focus, but that is the means through which you will come to this contract. That's what he's saying. Not that you want people to benefit, otherwise, it, it will be utilitarian. Now, contracting, so you look out for how the system you are going to run will be just, will be fair. Everyone, minority or majority, will benefit. And so that is how you will work it to get there. <laughs> I'm so tired. Is there any question? Where is my water? Okay. Yeah. Is there any other question? Okay. Enoch, where are you? Are you there? Augustine, equity and equality man. Are you there? <laughs> uh, I'm, doc. Yeah, I'm, here, I'm here. You are here, okay. I'm asking now after Augustine. Augustine will let me rest. Augustine, the equity and equality thing, has it come out clear now? Are you here, Augustine? If you're doc. my friend, then don't be absent. I'll catch you. Well, please, he's probably here. He told me he was in the library, so he can't talk. You are entering a lecture. He said you are in a library. If we were doing a physical lecture, we'll go and sit at the library. Or, or, or there's a reason why. Yes, the Wi-Fi. <laughs> Which one? How will you talk? So you came to listen to a monologue. May I give the blows to you to give to Augustine? Which one? <laughs> it's a lecture. Otherwise, I would have just done a recording and sent to you. No class. Then you play it. I want to engage you. So you should sit at a place where you can talk. All right, you it. Tell him that if it's equity and equality didn't work out, still we can engage outside of class. I want to end here. God willing, okay. next week. Yes. Thank you, madam. We we have done. Please read the um a little bit on the communist manifesto, the libertarian manifesto. You don't need to read, we are not doing political science, but you need a little bit of it at least to have a firm grip of what Browse's Justice as Fairness seeks to do. Then you can critique him well. If you want to insist like Harriet, as I think wanted to do at the latter part of my discussion, that he didn't only uh, pro propose a contractarian theory, but there's still some utilitarian undertones. It can be a critique you want to raise. We'll see if he's able to counter it. Then those who talk about his veil of ignorance not being um, meaningfully practicable. It, it sounds all good and nice hypothetically, but it doesn't look like you are able to meaningfully wear a veil of ignorance. Your interests will always some way somewhat come to play, even in your uh, prescription of the principles. Okay, But he can still counter respond and say, at least your, your attempt at it, to attempting to be objective about it, I'll be working out all you come to be. So you may want to mark script without looking at IDs or names. 
And that's what I do sometimes when I finish and I really want to find out, ah, did, did I see me she do well? Let me see how this, then I can now consciously go and look. But sometimes if you feel that it can obstruct your view of what you are doing, you, you close over IDs and just look at the responses like I was doing with your submissions a moment ago, I showed you. I just look at the raw work, grade or when we finish, sometimes I'm people, oh dog, I don't know where I can go to. I say, hey, what do you do to plagiarism? You, my friend. Then I'll go and look at your thing properly and show you. See, you did this, 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 and then you didn't submit your work. Then you have lost it all. I did that to someone last semester, and the person didn't get to an A. But not I did it as an MB, they say I did that. It didn't submit. The person wanted, oh, please, I, I was trying to submit by the time I said, well, if I will open it for you, then I have to open for all. Then it means that the essence of the work didn't come out well. Those who were pressed, but still forced and worked within that short time and got seven over 10 will be on, on duly disadvantaged. If I opened for some people to now relax and come and submit and get 10, why? That's not fair. So you are looking at only you and not the other persons that could be affected because of the system we are running. And if you want it to be as fair as possible, then you apply the rules in an equitable way. All right. We will continue with the very last stretch of uh, topics, which centers around democrat uh, democracy. Uh, I think the paper we want to do will be Kwame Justice's uh, traditional authority and stuff like that. It's on the course outline. You can look out for it and then read and prepare to write three essays on the topics that we've done so far in the course. I suspect we will have one compulsory essay and that compulsory essay will be about three topics in one. I'm just telling you because normally people will try and punch some three topics and say, when I go, by all means, there'll be a topic on each, a question on each of the topics. So I'll choose a question on this, that, and that. The question one that I'm thinking of now mm -hmm, to be a compulsory question, ask those who came, not last year, but the year before you, will be three in one. Some, okay, I won't say anything. Three in one. So you would have to have engaged three topics that we have discussed extensively, no problems about that. Then you now apply it using another topic. So it will be four. That is why it counts for so much. And if we went that way, then we'll have that one compulsory question and another sub question you choose from. Then the compulsory one will be 30 max, and the other one will be 20, making 50. That way you end up doing five topics. Okay, in answering the question. All that means you should engage the content. You see, engage it. Don't say it's level 300. I want you to read and then know the content, even at your level, then you can answer it. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful week. I'll share this one. If people find it worthwhile, then they can engage it. Until we meet next week, God will. If it is raining still, we may do another online. I don't want it to be online. But if it has to be, then you still have an advantage of having the recorded session. Take care. Thank you.